Werner's theory of coordination compound. I will teach you the super easy concept and important questions of Werner's theory of coordination compound, which many people are misunderstanding. First of all, let me teach you that why we study Werner's theory. Well, in 1893, Werner was the first person who studied coordination compounds and put forward his famous theory. This theory explains three important concepts of coordination compounds. Firstly, it explains the geometry of coordination compounds. I mean, it teaches that how ligands and counter ions are arranged around the central metal atom. Secondly, it explains the important concept of primary valency and secondary valency. I mean, it teaches the oxidation number and coordination number of central metal atom. Thirdly, it explains the important concept of isomerism. I mean, how coordination compounds exist in different forms with the same chemical formula. Thus, due to these three important concepts, we study Werner's theory. Now, what is Werner's theory? Well, Werner Baba took cobalt chloride and he reacted it with ammonia NH3. As a result, he got cobalt chloride dot 6 NH3. Now listen carefully. He was interested to find out that how these three chlorine atoms and six molecules of NH3 are bonded to cobalt. Let me repeat it. He was interested to find out that how these three chlorine atoms and six molecules of NH3 are bonded to cobalt. To solve this mystery, he performed an experiment. He took this coordination compound and he reacted it with silver nitrate. As a result, he got 3 mole of silver chloride in the form of white precipitate. From this reaction, he concluded that coordination compounds form two types of bonds, direct bond and indirect bond. For example, Ammonia forms direct bond with cobalt. That's why it didn't react with silver nitrate. While chlorine forms indirect bond with cobalt. That's why it easily reacted with silver nitrate. So he took the coordination compound and he rearranged it. He wrote cobalt. We know that NH3 is directly bonded to cobalt. He firstly bonded six molecules of NH3 to cobalt. Then he put square bracket around it. Lastly, he bonded three chlorine ions to cobalt. Thus, this was the first coordination compound in chemistry, which was suggested by Werner Baba. Remember that Werner Baba says that direct bond is known as secondary valency and indirect bond is known as primary valency. Let me repeat it. Werner Baba says that direct bond is always known as secondary valency and indirect bond is always known as primary valency. Hence noted down this important concept. What are primary valency and secondary valency? Well, we know that every metal atom like cobalt shows two types of valencies, primary valency and secondary valency. To understand this concept, let consider this coordination compound. Let this coordination compound ionizes into these ions. Here, we will learn five important concepts. Firstly, there is plus three charge present on this coordination sphere. It means that the primary valency of cobalt is plus 3, while there are 6 molecules of NH3 bonded to cobalt. It means that the secondary valency of cobalt is 6. Secondly, the primary valency of any metal atom is the same as its oxidation number, while the secondary valency of any metal atom is the same as its coordination number. For example, the primary valency of cobalt is plus 3, 
so its oxidation number is also plus 3. While the secondary valency of cobalt is 6, so its coordination number is also 6. Thirdly, primary valency is ionizable while secondary valency is non-ionizable. For example, when this coordination compound is dissolved in water, the three chlorine ions are ionized. So we say that primary valency, which form indirect bond with cobalt, are ionizable. On the other hand, when this coordination compound is dissolved in water, these six molecules of ammonia are not ionizable. They are tightly bonded to the cobalt. It is because they form direct bond with the cobalt. Therefore, we say that primary valency is ionizable in water because they are indirectly bonded to central metal atom. While secondary valency is non-ionizable because they are directly bonded to central metal atom. Fourthly, primary valency is satisfied by negative ions like chlorine. While secondary valency is satisfied by a neutral molecule or negative ion like chlorine or NH3 molecule. Remember that secondary valency cannot be satisfied by positive ion because central metal atom itself is a positive species. Fifthly, primary valency is represented by dotted line while secondary valency is represented by solid line. Therefore, note down these five important concepts of Werner's theory. Now we will learn how to calculate primary valency and secondary valency of coordination compounds. We know that primary valency is equal to oxidation number while secondary valency is equal to coordination number. For example, consider these coordination compounds and find their primary valency and secondary valency. I find the oxidation number of cobalt. I write cobalt plus, there are 6 molecules of NH3. I write 6 into NH3 plus, there are 3 ions of chlorine. I write 3 chlorine is equal to 0. This 0 means that there are no net charge present on this coordination compound. Now I write cobalt plus, we know that NH3 is neutral molecule. I write 6 into 0 plus each chlorine ion has negative charge. I write 3 into negative 1 is equal to 0. After calculation, I get cobalt is equal to plus 3. The oxidation number of cobalt is plus 3, thus the primary valency of cobalt is plus 3. Secondly, we can see that Cobalt is bonded to 6 ligands of NH3. The coordination number of cobalt is plus 6. Thus we say that secondary valency of cobalt is 6. On the other hand, I find the oxidation number of iron. I write iron plus there are 6 ions of cyanide is equal to minus 4. This minus 4 means that the net charge on this coordination compound is minus 4. I write iron plus 6 into minus 1 because each cyanide ion has negative 1 charge is equal to minus 4. After calculation, I get iron is equal to 2. The oxidation number of iron is plus 2, thus the primary valency of iron is plus 2. Secondly, we can see that Cobalt is bonded to 6 ligands of cyanide. The coordination number of cobalt is 6. Thus we say that the secondary valency of cobalt is 6. Now consider this coordination compound. Pause the video and try to find its primary valency and secondary valency. Well, I find the oxidation number of platinum. I write platinum plus 4 into chlorine equals minus 2. The charge on each chlorine ion is negative 1. I write platinum plus 4 into minus 1 equals minus 2. After calculation, I get platinum is equal to plus 2. The oxidation number of platinum is plus 2. Thus, the primary valency of platinum is plus 2. 
Secondly, there are four ligands of chlorine bonded to the platinum. The coordination number of platinum is 4. Thus, the secondary valency of this central metal atom is 4. Therefore, using this simple method, we can easily find primary valency and secondary valency of any central metal atom. Finally, we will learn the structures of Werner's theory. Remember that if this coordination number is 6, the central metal atom forms octahedral geometry. For example, cobalt forms octahedral geometry. If the coordination number is 4, the central metal atom either forms square planar geometry or tetrahedral geometry. For example, platinum forms square planar geometry while nickel forms tetrahedral geometry. Now consider these four donation compounds of cobalt. I will draw their structures according to Werner's theory. I write cobalt. We know that cobalt forms octahedral geometry. I draw these six lines around it. In case of these three remaining coordination compounds, I write central metal atom. I draw six lines around them. We know that primary valency is denoted by dotted line and secondary valency is denoted by solid line. Now listen carefully. These are the six ligands of NH3. I draw these six ligands of NH3 around central metal atom of cobalt. Remember that these six ligands of NH3 satisfy the secondary valency of cobalt. Secondly, there are three ions of chlorine. They satisfy primary valency of cobalt. I just draw three random dotted lines. I put three chlorine ions around cobalt. Remember that you can draw these three dotted lines of primary valency in any side. It totally depends on you. Secondly, in this coordination compound, there are five ligands of NH3. They satisfy secondary valency of central metal atom. I write these five ligands of NH3 around central metal atom. Now listen carefully. One secondary valency of cobalt is not satisfied. Let me repeat it. One secondary valency of cobalt is not satisfied. To fulfill it, I place one chlorine ion here. Remember that I say this chlorine is a shemel. I mean, it fulfills both the secondary valency and primary valency of cobalt. Two chlorine ions are remaining. I draw these two dotted lines and I write two chlorine ions. Thirdly, in this coordination compound, there are four ligands of NH3. I write these four ligands of NH3 around cobalt. I write one chlorine ion and one chlorine ion. These two chlorine ions act like shemel. They satisfy both the primary valency and the secondary valency of central metal atom. I draw one dotted line and I write this chlorine. Lastly, in case of this coordination compound, there are three ligands of NH3. I write these three ligands of NH3 around central metal atom. Then I write three chlorine ions around central metal atom. This satisfy both primary valency and secondary valency of central metal atom. Now Werner Baba added silver nitrate to these four coordination compounds. In case of first coordination compound, these three chlorine are indirectly bonded to cobalt. Hence three chlorine ions are out of the coordination sphere. Thus three mole of silver chloride are formed. In case of second coordination compound, two chlorine indirectly bonded to central metal atom. Thus two mole of silver chloride are formed. In case of third coordination compound, there is only one chlorine indirectly bonded to central metal atom. Thus one mole of silver chloride is formed. In case of fourth coordination compound, there is no chlorine indirectly bonded to central metal atom. Hence no silver chloride is formed. So the structure formula of this coordination compound is 
कोबॉल्ट एन एच थ्री सिक्स स्क्वेर ब्रिकेट क्लोज थ्री क्लोरिन आइन्स द स्ट्रक्चर फार्मूला ऑफ दिस कोऑर्डिनेशन कंपाउंड इज कोबॉल्ट एन एच थ्री फाइव क्लोरिन स्क्वेर ब्रिकेट क्लोज टू क्लोरिन आइन्स द स्ट्रक्चर फार्मूला ऑफ दिस कोऑर्डिनेशन कंपाउंड इज कोबॉल्ट फोर एन एच थ्री मॉलिक्यूल टू क्लोरिन स्क्वेर ब्रिकेट क्लोज वन क्लोरिन and the structure formula of this coordination compound is cobalt three molecules of nh3 three chlorine ions these are the four different structures of werner's theory finally we will find the total ions and ratio of electrolyte of these coordination compounds in case of first coordination compound it ionizes to two parts i mean there is one positive ion Plus three negative ions. Hence, there are total four ions. Secondly, there are two types of electrolyte: a positive ion to be negative ion. There is one positive ion and three negative ions. Hence, the ratio of electrolyte is one to three. Similarly, I repeat this process for the remaining coordination compounds. In case of this coordination compound. There are one positive ion and two negative chlorine ions. Hence, there are total three ions. The ratio of electrolyte is one to two. In case of this coordination compound, there are one positive ion and one negative ion. Hence, there are total two ions. The ratio of electrolyte is one to one. In case of this coordination compound, there is no ion. Hence, the total ions is zero, but its electrolyte ratio is one to zero because it acts as an electrolyte. Therefore, using this simple method, we can easily master Werner's theory.